Hello and welcome to Week 8 of Leadership 323. This week we will examine creativity, problem solving, and the generation of ideas. What do you think creativity has to do with being a leader? When you think about leaders, does creativity typically come to mind? I'd like you to think about creativity as how one might approach problems. Given this perspective, we will identify the ways in which leaders solve problems using creative approaches. After identifying problems, creativity begins when we generate ideas. But how do you generate ideas? Innovation is the practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in offering goods or services. Creativity is typically centered around original thought and knowledge, which unleashes the potential and is an integral part of idea generation. Innovation, on the other hand, is used to turn the creative idea that you've come up with into a viable solution. One could say that the new things aspect of innovation is where you find creativity. From a business perspective, creativity is the personal capacities and process of generating a unique product that has value. Creative ideas are those ideas that challenge the usual perspectives. New ideas are often met with suspicion, skepticism, and sometimes even envious rejection. There are lots of myths about creativity and creative thinking. These include that creativity is a rare gift, or that everyone has a certain amount of creativity and there's nothing we can do about it. Michael Milchako is one of the most acclaimed creativity experts in the world, and he would certainly disagree with these myths. He highlighted 12 ideas in his 2011 book, creative thinkering. These include not stopping with your first good idea and learning to trust your instincts. In your textbook, the author introduces the four P's. Product, the qualities and criteria that distinguish a solution as creative, namely that it is unique and of value. Person, the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that support individual creative activity. Press, the contextual variables that foster or inhibit creative thinking and behavior. Process, the steps of thinking and doing that maximize creative possibilities. Here's another look at the four Ps. The person is the entrepreneur. The person is at the center of any creative endeavor. They use their skills, the environment, their creative abilities, and their motivation to create the product. The process refers to the procedure used by the person to develop the product. The process refers to the thought process rather than the methodology. The product is built by the person and is the result of creative, the creative process. It is the new innovation. Press represents the environment and the climate in which the person operates and functions in to create the product. It refers to conditions conducive or prohibitive for creativity. You have the capacity to generate ideas, many ideas. Human beings are problem solvers. Innovation is the result of ideas building off of other ideas. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. But generating ideas takes effort. You don't simply stumble over good ideas. You have to think about the problem and the potential approaches regardless of their feasibility. Divergent thinking is a thought process or method used to generate creative ideas by exploring many possible solutions, 
your textbook describes multiple divergent thinking techniques. The important takeaway here is being willing to generate lots of ideas when faced with a problem. Brainstorming is about the generation of many ideas. Quantity matters over quality. As you brainstorm, it is best to withhold criticism and judgment. Embrace the negative and the positive. Reverse brainstorming is a technique that builds on our natural ability to more easily see problems than solutions. Instead of asking a group to brainstorm ideas that would work, the group, the group brainstorms all the ways that they could cause a plan to fail. Pass the note is a technique for generating, generating ideas when discussion is limited. It's also called pass it on. And you can try this technique in a group by giving everyone 30 seconds to write an idea on a sheet of paper and then have them pass it on to the next person who adds to it. Here are some problem analysis techniques. Problem analysis requires the use of your critical and creative thinking skills. Problems are often or can often be turned around and often broken down into small parts. The scamper technique helps you do this. This is an acronym that stands for Substitute, Combine, Adapt, Modify, Put to Another Use, Eliminate, and or Reverse Each Attribute. Each of these words prompts how you might uh, think about how to modify attributes to generate new ideas. Let's consider this old rotary dial phone. Let's substitute the dial for a touch screen, combine the handset with the body, adapt to a cordless environment, modify the shape, put in a GPS feature, eliminate the handset, and reverse the primary communication method from voice to text. Abracadabra, we have the iPhone. Morphological synthesis. This is a technique used to encourage creative problem solving, which extends on attribute transferring. A matrix is created listing concrete attributes along the x-axis and the ideas from a second attribute uh, along the y-axis, yielding a long list of idea combinations. Here's how you might implement this thing, this, uh, this technique. Think about the humble ballpoint pen. And here are some attributes. I think we can, we can agree that ballpoint pens are light, portable, and pretty useful when you need a tool to make a permanent mark on a piece of paper. So, how can we put these attributes to use in other ways? Here are some possibilities. Maybe I can use some pens to fix things around the house. Since they are durable, light, and cheap, perhaps I can use them to reinforce an old coffee table or keep the Venetian blinds from slipping. Perhaps I might have some friends over and I, we need a way to entertain the kids. Since pens are portable, light, and durable, perhaps I can make up a game uh, to keep the kids occupied. Okay, these are probably pretty horrible ideas, but I think you get the picture. Visualization techniques describe the capacity to play out scenarios in one's mind. The term ideation is often used to describe the entire creative process this basically means to form ideas in your mind. Some experts suggest that visualizing the future starts with thinking about worst-case scenarios. This is a concept in risk management wherein the planner, in planning for potential disasters, considers the most severe possible outcome. By framing problems in certain ways, we can often change our outlook. You might start by asking yourself, What's really important here? Play and build techniques emphasize the iterative and cumulative notion in idea generation. Research has demonstrated that positive emotions and humor enhance creativity and motivation to engage. Playing with others multiplies that effect. Does solving problems necessarily have to be a humorless process? 
Can you make things fun while keeping things professional? Media richness theory says that different forms of media are fit for different communication purposes. It argues that media that are rich are best for resolving equivocal issues with high complexity, while lean media are best for communicating simple, certain, or unequivocal, unequivocal messages. A rich medium is one that is good for explaining, discussing, discussing, and debating complex concepts. Games are highly suitable for conveying very complex ideas. What sort of complex ideas are conveyed from the game of Monopoly, for example? Incubation techniques are activities in which you shift your attention away from the problem on purpose. Focusing too much on a problem narrows your thinking and may cause stress. Continuing with your normal everyday routine can help free up the cognitive load in your brain. The bottom line is that sometimes you just need to disengage and think about something else. Sometimes it helps to take an alternate perspective and try generating ideas from the outside. Sometimes this means considering the problem from another person's eyes. By using user-centered data collection methods, you can direct your attention to see through the user's eyes and feel what they feel. Multidisciplinary thinking encourage you, encourages you to think uh, about other fields of practice and to experience uh, the process from their perspectives. Multi multidisciplinary thinking is simply trying to examine a problem from a different competency. In the Army, for example, we sometimes look at tactical problems from a historical perspective. An engineer might ask a graphic designer or artist to think about a project. Likewise, an art historian might ask a scientist to help determine the exact age of a statue or a painting. So this has been a brief overview of Chapter 8 in your textbook. The intent of this video is to supplement your learning and reinforce Chapter 8. Please make sure to read the entire chapter to ensure that you have captured the key ideas outlined about creativity, problem solving, and idea generation. Thank you.